Um, it was, you yeah. know, so I've definitely been in talks recently with those guys about starting. That would be cool. Right. And she'd like dress the that part. Again. She'd do this boof, kind of, not boof, which is thing, now more my style. Stri- Back then it wasn't, but now it is. And totally. so I, I felt like part of that was, this isn't my style. I'm kind of a poser. <laughs> um, but now that I've graduated into more of that, you know, old fashioned rockabilly, not rockabilly, but kind just classic the retro pinup styles. Yes. And then yes. now too, I don't, you know, classic with blown knees style. and stuff doing yeah. ska punk, doing punk shows is just not that comfortable the, yeah. the following few days after the show. And that's your second band is more yeah, the, punk. Yeah. Okay. The Bomb Shell Academy is like well, a ska and, punk band. Well, okay. What I remember about you playing is you're a little uh, Gwen Stefani-esque. Mm-hmm. With, with you know, oh, she's, not, she's, not, she's darker, but like she has that vibe. She can very has cool. that. She can sing like her. Uh, well, she sounds like her Ashley, but just has that whole vibe. You yeah. know, yeah, that Orange County. Yeah, my dad worked in Long Beach for a lot of years. I spent a lot of time in Southern California, so I don't know if it was just the influence in that of that in general. I don't know. I just found her when I was really young, and that was just, oh, yeah. she's super. Uh, what's new for you on the horizons? I, I I was there when you were doing some of Lori's eyebrows, and you brought up something about men. Yeah, brows. doing the bro brows. Bro brows. Yeah, I think boys brows for boys would be really fun. Yeah, that's hard to say. Can you say that three times fast? <laughs> brows for boys. 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 Bro brows. Bro brows. Brows for bros. I brows think for I, bros. So brows for bros. Brows for bros. You can't do it. I've done a couple of, of men brows, and I think that it's it looks great. And I've seen actually seen some beautiful gay men with, that get their brows done, and it's stunning. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do before you get to the tattooing process, but if you get to that, the fact that these tattoo processes now are mimicking hair strokes yep. mm-hmm. it's yep. not this you know solid tattoo mm-hmm. that you think yeah. about it's literally a skinny teeny tiny line as big as your hair right and you that's know? what makes and it look and there's like all different hair. styles so depending on what your client wants for guys you're doing all hair stroke well we've got this so water good. running in the background i just have to say something because no we're not in the bathroom Sorry. and nobody is I using sh- the restroom i couldn't think hold it think was <laughs> but you're gonna hear the water yeah so <laughs> our water yeah the water thing is just filling up so it sounds like a yeah, a stream of water. Anyway, but well, what about Burning, Burning Man? Man? You just oh, went to Burning yes, Man. I want to yes. hear about that. That was not my first burst. My seventh Burning Man in a row. Wow. So I am definitely. Uh, it made me laugh. I was thinking on the way here. I go. I'm. Fi- I'm a. Fi- I'm fit and hippie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is. She's she the embodiment us. of I our surf name, a right? lot and then leave there and go to Burning Man and <laughs> yes. eat salad and ride my bike around and... naked. No. <laughs> Lots of clothes. Yeah. Yes, lots of clothes. So what do you I love about it? I don't think I'd want to do that. I mean, I figured you get sunburned. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, especially in the desert yeah. when it's yeah, hot. it's reflective. The ground August. is white. There's no trees. It's August. It's 100 degrees. And yeah. it's... Uh, no, there's no... Ugh. Yeah. No, thank you. So you're riding your bike. It feels terrible. What do you love about Burning Man? Why do you keep going back oh, every year? man. Burning Man. <laughs> A girl I work with has been to Burning Man probably 14 or 15 times. And working at the salon, she'd go every year. And I always just thought it was really funny. Like, you people go into a FEMA camp... <laughs> volunteer like yes make a FEMA camp in the desert pay money That's to go to the, yeah. what is wrong with you like yo weirdos <laughs> and then I had a friend take me to a regional burn oh so it's just in Grantsville like you go around the corner really? and boom right there yeah and you could go swimming and have so they the girl at work took me out there and I remember really liking that going like oh these people are really nice it's very um all inclusive non-judgmental so I think I was at that space in my life where also to just you know you're always trying to figure out where you fit in at and you know what you're trying to do and who's moving and who's shaking and so I went to that with the girl at work it was fun everything was fine and then the next year she she asked if I want to go to Burning Man and I said sure and I cried the whole way there. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. Because like, you was, go from a small okay, scale to I just a had no idea scale. what I was going to. I really yeah, never been so what to do a you big do? festival I wouldn't before. Know either. I, I had no, no idea. idea what I was going to. And I just, I basically just cried the whole way. I was super nervous. <laughs> we get there. We, you know, it's the middle of the night. We've been in line for hours. I'm just going, this is super interesting. <laughs> we get to the gate. They make me get out and roll in the dirt. What? what? 
And the guy gives me a hug. He's like, you've never been home before. I said, no. And he's like, get in the ground. They make you roll in the, in the if dust. If you're new? Oh, yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So still? Roll, yeah, so, yeah. So I roll in the dust and get out. And so we go to, you know, I follow the girl, my friend, to camp. And we get to camp. And she goes, okay. She's like, it's too cold. Don't worry about anything. She goes, just park your car. Get your bike. Grab your coat. Let's go. <laughs> so I, do, I okay. So I get on my bike. I follow her out into the middle of this thing, and there is this giant spaceship in the <laughs> middle of nowhere with this giant man on the top of it. And I just remember feeling instantly like, oh, I get it now. I'm like, oh. Like my mom used to always joke, and she goes, I don't know where you came from. You are literally from Oz. And I remember seeing it was like a big green spaceship and had a slide coming out of it. And I, I feel like I finally know where I belong. <laughs> and this was seven years ago? Yeah, that was seven years. I think my first burn was 2013. How has it changed in the last seven years? Just bigger? Lots more or? tech. Um, the numbers have stayed pretty similar, but a lot of tech, a lot more electric bikes, a lot more um, digital art. Okay, so the big money. spaceship, that's what they burn, right? Mm-hmm. They did so burn that. So every year it's different. They build a great big Yep, they build a man, something. a big wooden structure. Okay. And every year it's different, so artists submit, you know, oh, art to do it, okay. and then they pick who's going to do it. So it's all volunteer and grant funded and stuff. And so, yeah, they do projects. They create a design, they build it, and they burn it. And then when do they burn it? So they burn that at the end of it all? Yep, or? Saturday and Sunday night they burn the, wow. burn the man, and then I believe Sunday they do the temple. So, yeah, it's just quite fascinating. Interesting people. Every year it's different. I try not to go in there with any expectations. I think for me, there's something about just waking up, not looking at your phone in the morning. Yeah. Your friends are right outside. Let's yeah. get on yeah, our there's bike. No, there's no real know. time frame. There's, there's no, no real... agenda. There's no money. There's no commodity. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. to buy. You share. So you, you, yeah, you do. You stay in a tent. I have a yurt that is built out of our oh. max hexi. It's called a hexi yurt. So that's fine. It provides adequate shelter. Yeah. Because my back is getting weaker. Um, <laughs> looking for something a little bit more, yeah. you know, accessible. Because right. some people will take, like, RVs and campers and trailers. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. a lot oh, okay. of RVs now, a lot okay. of campers. But, yeah. you know, as you go through it, out ten, you know, 10 or 15 years in, people are just tired of building big structures every year. So. Well, and plus, yeah. if you're getting older, like, I, you know, I can sleep in the tent, but I need, mm-hmm. I need like, a, a big, not. huge mattress. Yeah, yeah, and I don't have air like conditioning or anything. So there's there's points where ninety five percent of the time it's fine, but then there are those moments where you do have to go seek some sort of shelter because it just does get a little bit intense as far as the weather. But mm. yeah, I don't know. I like the air. And how long is quality. it? Is it a week? You know, it depends if you're on a work crew or something. I usually go in for about two, like twelve to fourteen days, depending mm. on. Do you go on to work and help to set up? No, well, I usually do that. Um, depending on if we have a theme camp that we're working with, or we've had a camp for the last couple of years, an art car that we had. We had a, a Dusty Cobra art car, so we that's been sold. But when we had that, it would you know get us in, and we'd work on that and come in a you know three or four days before and stay a couple days after so so cool so that's it's pretty cool spot never, it's terrible it's boring never go it was it's canceled thanks i've you. never gone i've been interested <laughs> totally and then each year i'm like maybe i want to go and then i don't but i have some friends that go every year and uh my one friend she said you are going next year we're gonna make you go so it's so. all about kind of letting go of all your stuff here and burning it in the fire. Is that kind of what it's all I think, about? I think that part is I mean, what's attachment. Kind of the... um, that's a part that I have a really hard time with is the ecological sustainability factor of it. And I know that they have definitely been approached by that. I know they're definitely talking about ways to make the festival less uh, carbon obnoxious, I guess you can say. Because yeah. that is the thing about, you know, like, hey, we're taking a bunch of really good resources and setting them on fire for no reason. And so I definitely understand oh, we did all this work and we burned it. Let's not attach to things. Mm. But at the same time, I think they're definitely striving to make a change. But yeah, I think it's different for all sorts of people. So some people take physical stuff there and they burn it. Other people go and try to let go of things that are inside yeah, of it. Yeah, maybe the emotional baggage. Yeah. Some people are going, like, for me, I like it because I get to see my friends from all over the world yeah, yeah. in one place. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I roll relatively sober there. I'm not super into um, chemicals or anything, mm-hmm. especially not there. For me, I feel that I'm the same person here as I am at Burning Man. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have a wild side, I think, that mm-hmm. they let out 
maybe a Burning Man. I don't know. <laughs> so here's, here's... I like to keep that in my backyard yeah, if I'm going to do the wild side. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just... But it's fun. Yeah. And there's medical teams, and it's just a city. And you can... Yeah. Hmm. If you want to fly planes, if you want to work at the fire department, if you want to do, you know, EMT or medical or mental health, you can just go volunteer and work anywhere you want in the city. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cooperative. And it's, it's a, in a town. It's yeah. in a certain town. Well, we build the town. Oh, so you yeah. actually yeah. just build it's a town. It's in the middle of the desert. It's the third in biggest Black, zip code Black in... Rock City. No, really? it's the second biggest zip code, I believe, in Nevada during those oh. two or three weeks. So it was, wow. it was originally held in 1986. Code. So 33 okay. years ago, yeah, it started Beach. in Baker Beach in San Francisco. Okay. okay. That's, how, that's where it first started. And the founder now, just died last year. Yeah. So and, Yep, and it's held in Black Rock City. And they temporary they they erect a city temporarily. Hmm. It uh, let's see. Then you take it all down. Yep. Oh, yeah. Zero point zero two. Yeah. They, like they, everything percent. you bring in goes out, including your feces. Yep. So. Trash. Everything. <laughs> Luckily we have porta yeah. potties, so that's okay on yeah. the poop <laughs> poop department, but. Yep. <laughs> you see so. some silly things, you know, and, you, and there's definitely some naked parades and some. There's something for everybody, well, and I, yeah. you know, and there's beautiful sanctioned events all around the world. And uh, for me, it's a all year thing. Although I don't like to talk about it all year, the twelve principles, ten, the top, ten, ten principles. principles. I think we t- say twelve because there's two more that we all all like to add. Do you, um, so what I meant? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Radical inclusion, radical self reliance, radical self expression, communal efforts civic responsibility, gifting, decommodification, participation, immediacy, and leave no trace. And that's the 10? Those are the 10. So what Mm -hmm. are the other two, Ashley? And then what were the other two? Somebody was coming up with a couple more principles. (laughs) Um, Gosh, now I feel like I'm on the spot. I would have written that down if I... Well, yeah, but that's that's 10. How do you remember all 12? Yeah, there was... That's a lot already. I I would think, like, with civic civic responsibility, gifting, demodification, it's probably introspection I don't know it's certainly interesting and one of those things where you know it's oh I think consent was one oh yeah that we were talking about because consent becomes a big issue out there um, where people, I mean, I even, uh, there's a thing that we like to go to as friends. It's a Dr. Bronner's shower. You do get as naked as you're comfortable with, but it is, it's like, don't touch anybody that doesn't belong to you. Right, consent. Don't. Yes. You know, just so I think there was an incident this year that, you know, somebody did totally grab my boob in a not, you know, intentional hostile way, but they were just, you know, but at the same time, we're just like, Ugh. Yeah. so they really yeah. push consent. Yeah. So that was the 11th principle that they That's were talking about. If you take all those principles and you apply them to, you know, everyday life, you get a pretty good community. Yeah. Communities like this, you know, you look at what we're looking at right now with one, two, you know, 10, 15 yeah. houses. Yeah. If there was a garden, if there was, I yeah. mean, this whole community could function technically right. Right. by itself. If they Absolutely. worked as a community. As you yep. worked as a yeah. community and mm-hmm. whatever like gifts or, or things that I was good at, I could, mm-hmm. I could give and contribute. Yeah, and you grew tomatoes and Lori you and grew squash and you right. trade. Or, yeah. or maybe mm-hmm. I'm not good at growing, but I'm good at building things. Mm-hmm. So I build, you grow, mm-hmm. you know. You build the houses. Ashley waxes and makes everybody look beautiful. Yep, I'm the beautician. <laughs> we had a plumber down the street, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody hunts and kills the durs down there in the woods, yeah. you know. I mean, just silly <laughs> things like that. But with so many people and so many needs uh, that it eventually goes out the window. So it's nice to see it happen, you know, with 100,000 people and then the thought of, you know, can you up it? But they have a lot of sanctioned events all over the world that you can go to in different countries. Interesting. Um, some are very, you know, a lot stricter. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. kind of neat. That's thing. so cool. sharing our embarrassing you know what's great i met somebody last night that i thought was great (laughs) she was super funny she was really really nice and then somehow we came up on the topic of oh we went and saw a good friend of mine is in a band called newborn slaves here in utah it's like a reggae 
reggae band. Mm. And somehow we're talking. They played a Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Nice. And she just goes, that was my first kiss. Anthony Kiedis. And I go, no. <laughs> and she goes, totally. And I said, well, that's pretty dang good. Like, I go, that's not a story you hear every day. Like, Anthony, like, and she wasn't, no I mean, she was probably mid-40s, same age as he is. And so it was just funny because it was. she said oh, it was during their first Lord. album. And I just go, what a first. <laughs> 